Hello, my name's Ross Fisher. I'm a consultant paediatric surgeon at Sheffield Children's Hospital. I've just come off stage from giving my talk on, uh, the title was Trials and Tribulations in Paediatric Trauma, but my take home message is that paediatric trauma is different. There were three sections to the talk. The first different I talked about is the difference in numbers, then the difference in trauma, and then ultimately different management. Dealing with numbers, the key factor about paediatric trauma is that it's exceptionally rare compared to adult trauma. There's a confusion uh, that rare means that we don't necessarily understand it, and I described a little more of the reality of paediatric trauma in numbers. I use the number 73 and 37. 73 is the 21st prime number, which is made up of factors 3 and 7 and 37 is the mirror of 73, 12th prime number, again made up of the factors 3 and 7. And then I used those numbers to illustrate paediatric trauma. Uh, importantly, there are 737 major paediatric trauma injuries in your average year. Uh, 2012 time data is the basis of most of the data I've used. Uh, that compares to uh, approximately 46,000 adult trauma injuries in the same time period. So showing that paediatric trauma is different in terms of numbers. Uh, I also highlighted that the numbers that we're used to dealing with when we consider what a trauma patient is, the median age of trauma in paediatrics is in fact not some hairy teenager who may or may not be an adult, but a 7.3 year old boy. So paediatric trauma is different in terms of numbers. In terms of a trauma, paediatric trauma is also different to the adult trauma that we experience. The trauma is caused by the same three major factors as in adults, so trauma due to road traffic accidents, traumas due to falls and traumas due to non-accidental injuries. I also highlighted the 3773 issue again in that in paediatric trauma the two major causes of road traffic accidents and falls are both 37% of our numbers, whereas the most common injury in adults is due to road traffic accident at nearly 60%. But that was the point of highlighting that that trauma, although effectively the same, is actually completely different. That an adult road traffic accident trauma is due to a high velocity impact of a poorly restrained passenger in a murderous cavity, whereas a paediatric road traffic accident is actually usually pedestrian, and that's very different trauma. The trauma that occurs, even if it's a pedestrian adult and a pedestrian child, is also different in that cars are designed to impact an adult and protect them from trauma, whereas a child, rather than being struck in the leg, will be struck in the mid-abdomen and cause significant hemorrhage. I pointed out that paediatric surgeons don't operate, as adult surgeons do, to control hemorrhage because that's not the major cause of trouble in paediatric trauma. In fact, the most common operation we do is a trauma laparotomy for damage to the small bowel, usually caused by a lap belt and that the lap belt sign, although common in adult and paediatric trauma, is actually different trauma again. So what I've highlighted so far is the difference of trauma in numbers, there's different numbers in paediatric trauma, and different trauma that is sustained by the children, which brings us then to different management. And the point that I made is that I've used the word different as a noun, not as a verb. It's not encouraging my excellent emergency medicine colleagues to think differently, but to think different, because paediatric trauma is different. I highlighted the problem of triage, that triage in paediatric trauma is difficult. It has an over triage rate of approximately five, an under triage rate of 20%, which means that children admitted and transferred will be different to the children we're expecting. In addition to that, the management Rather than default to radiology, there is good evidence in the PCARN study showing that good clinical skills will exclude the majority of children with significant abdominal injury. The further uh, radiological investigations are different in children 
not because we just want to do things differently, but because the children suffer a different trauma and react differently. And I was privileged to be in the Royal College of Radiology Trauma Imaging Guidelines Group, which has drawn up new guidelines for the imaging of paediatric trauma patients. Then I spoke about the FAST scan and highlighted the fact that I own personally the most accurate, most sensitive and cheapest FAST scanner available. I'm wondering if I have it in my pocket. Yes, it's here. A coin. If you toss a coin, you have a sensitivity that is equal to the best FAST scanner available. 50%. My point is not to discourage people from doing FAST scans, but to point out that children are different. They are different in the way that they react to trauma, different in the trauma that they suffer from, and different, therefore, in the way that they're examined. So I highlighted a patient I looked after on Sunday who had massive laceration of his liver, segments 6, 7 and 8, dropped his haemoglobin by 40 points, and yet on his CT scan had no free fluid. Fast scanning doesn't work in paediatric trauma because they're different. And I left the uh, conference with the challenge to think different in that although we have the practice of, tr of prescribing tranexamic acid to children in paediatric trauma, for which there is no evidence, it's interesting to consider that in adults, the risk of DVT is approximately 1,000, and yet the risk of DVT in children is 1 in 50,000. So perhaps their coagulation is different too. So in summary, my talk is that Paediatric trauma is different. It's different because of the numbers, we're very rare. It's different in terms of the trauma that children sustain and react differently. And that's why when faced with a paediatric trauma patient, we should think of their management and think not difficult, but different.